Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal, and in today's video, we'll be doing another update for patch 915 PTR. As we, it looks like we are getting these updates to be smaller and smaller every single week. And honestly, at this point, we could be getting an announcement for 915 very, very soon. And hopefully soon, because I cannot wait to dive into the Mage Tower as soon as available for Legion Time Walking. In this update, we got more customizations for the Nightborn, primarily with the hands for the glowy effect, but also the faces on the male Nightborn, which make a pretty big impact. We got a Venthyr Monk buff in particular for the Monk ability, and I actually think this one looks really good, as well as a variety of other updates like leveling bonuses for 915 PTR. Right before we jump in, most of you guys are not subscribed and a lot of you guys tend to subscribe when I remind you to. So hit subscribe, hit the bell, join the community, link down for our Discord community below. But as always, let's jump into the update. First, let's take a look at the customization changes. Blizzard added some more stuff for the Nightborn, one of them being the hand glow effect, which was added for the female Nightborn in the last build. In this build, they're bringing over this effect for the male Nightborn, and I think it stands out a bit more, one, because I have bigger hands, but also with some of the different animations, like the Warlock stance in particular, you see these big glowy hands caressing that Shadow Bolt as it sits in the palm, and it looks fantastic. It really, really stands out. I'm really happy that they added this effect in the first place because it's definitely really unique. Blizzard did state that this isn't a final version of this look and they are still working on it in order to make it look better. If they can add like an outline around the fingers, which is a very similar effect that the Nightborn caster NPCs, like different guards and variety of different elite mobs, they have a very similar hand glow effect, but they have this Legion outline to it. A lot of the gear and armor from Legion had this outline effect and if they can add that into their fingertips as well, I think it will just make it stand out a lot more, especially if you're planning to play a caster Nightborn with all the hand-waving casting animations. The second bit of customization updates is the male Nightborn faces. They no longer have this mouth scowl anymore. Some of the face presets, especially a lot of the new ones, have the scowl as if the character just smelled rotten eggs and it made the character look old, it made the character look angry. Not a lot of people liked this many scowling faces, so Blizzard fixed them by removing the scowl completely. Instead, you don't get as much variation in terms of how the character looks, like they all have exactly the same expression, but the little details on the faces, the nuance behind it, the wrinkles that might show the age or the scar that might show that this is a more experienced Nightborn face, like the way you customize your character, I feel players are gonna have an easier time really trying to figure out the look that they like because those small details on the face stand out a lot better now that you no longer have the scowling mouth to look at. And I personally appreciate it for some players that want more bombastic look and to look completely different from one another when it comes to a Nightborn player compared to another Nightborn player in terms of standing out in looks. But I personally like this. I think this is really cool. And I wonder if they'll do some more like this for the female Nightborn as well, because I feel like their faces could use a bit more work. Then we got a buff for the Venthyr Monks. The Venthyr Monk ability is one of the less popular ones. It's something that I've experimented with myself and always wanted to be good. But with the changes with 915 PTR, I might actually be returning to them. Starting off with the buffs, all the Fallen Venthyr adepts, the Fallen Order monks, are now going to have an equal amount of off-spec adepts instead of completely random, so the ability should be more consistent. These monks will also apply Mystic Touch to the targets, which could be good in AoE. The Ox adepts, for all three specs, will now throw a Fallen Brew at the monk spawning the adepts, which will grant you a shield for 10% of monk's maximum health for 8 seconds. Tiger Adepts, Tiger Palm damage has been increased by 200%. Now, this sounds like a big number, but Tiger Palm did no damage now. And with this change, it actually does somewhat of damage. So in a long-term fight, it could be at least some kind of a single target damage increase. Tiger Adepts will also cast Spin and Crane Kick if there's more than one enemy with range. So these ability, this monks can also AoE now, which is pretty exciting. And they also give all your allies a 5% movement speed buff when they are not next to you for the monk wind walking effect. For Brewmaster Monks in particular, the Ox Adepts Breath of Fire Damage Reduction effect will now stack with your Breath of Fire effect. When you throw a keg at the enemy and you use Breath of Fire, you leave a dot on them. While the enemy is dotted with a Breath of Fire damage over time, they do 5% less damage to you. So as you spawn these monks in as a tank spec, they will also breathe on the enemy target, which can stack up a damage reduction for every single debuff. So instead of just having 5% damage reduction, if you have four brew effects on the enemy, four fire effects, 
that becomes 20% damage reduction, which means for tank spec, it actually has some defensive value. The crane adapts for Brewmaster Monks will now prefer to heal you over friendly targets, so some sort of a self-heal effect as well, on top of that absorb effect we talked about earlier. When you play Windwalker, the Tiger Adept's attacks will also count towards your spinning crane kick bonus, so they will try to AoE targets, they'll try to pick different targets, so if you try to stack up the big spinning crane kick for AoE, they will also help you towards that goal. And Crane Adepts, which are the healing monks, will try to prefer to heal you over another friendly target. So it kind of gives you this like a uh, versatile self-heal effect as a Windwalker monk if you want to use it, which altogether this amounts for some great quality of life updates. This covenant ability also comes with a conduit. If you play Venthyr and you grab the conduit, it simply increases the value of these monks, the damage as well as the healing output by a set amount. For me, at 200 item level, it's only 50% increase, but imagine that this conduit will probably scale pretty well as we go on into future patches and along with the expansion. As we get higher ranks of this conduit, the monks are simply going to improve and get better. And they already scale off of your gear, so a geared monk with a really solid conduit could probably see a pretty massive increase in value for this, whether for tanking, whether for healing. This is a pretty nice change for the Venthyr monk. This is a playstyle that isn't super popular in comparison to the Kyrian, the Necrolord, which is the most popular build right now, and even the Night Fae, which while not super popular, does see some sort of play, actually has some viable uses. The Venthyr for DPS and tanking was a little fallen short. The Venthyr worked really well for Mistweaver, so if you're a Mistweaver monk with these changes, you should be able to off tank for Mythic Plus groups or even go swap to DPS and not lose too much damage if you want to play mostly Venthyr. But as a tank, as a DPS, this actually provides some sort of damage value or tanking value finally. And I wonder how good this will be. Definitely needs more testing on PTR. I cannot wait to try this in some dungeons. But this is a pretty awesome update overall. And finally, we have a XP change to Torghast leveling. Blizzard added a bunch of ways for you to level our characters in 915, and one of the ways you could level is with Torghast, either through daily quests that you can get to go into Torghast, clear it out, collect a bunch of XP on a daily rotation, as well as Renown, or just simply running Torghast as much as you want to, since that will now scale with your character level. They've improved the amount of experience you gain from Torghast, and these are the changes so far. Interacting with any of the spirits inside of Torghast will now reward you for my character that was level 52, I'm not sure if this XP scales with level or not, but a thousand XP, which is a lot better because killing any of the mobs inside of Torghast is like 54, so a thousand XP is like multiples of those mobs all in one. Interacting with any of the extra events or activities inside of Torghast, like opening treasure chests or helping any of the trapped souls get out of Torghast is 2000 experience. The broker room where you get to go and buy some powers, it usually has some souls hanging around like four or five of them. That room becomes a pretty big payday, which will reward on average between 4,000 to 5,000 experience because of the amount of souls that are in there. And killing the final boss on a level 5 floor rewards you with 31,000 experience, again for a level 52 character. Not sure if that scales properly, but most likely it does since a lot of the quest stuff in Shadowlands 915 PTR scales pretty well. And if you were to finish up the quest in order to get into Torghast, do some stuff, turn in the quest for the daily Torghast event, you get like 48,000 experience for turning it in. My Torghast run started at about 13% of my XP bar and ended at 92% of my XP bar. So we got almost a level worth of XP for doing two wings and completing the quest. This is a massive improvement to what Torghast questing was like on PTR. And I think it's cool that they added Torghast questing as in a way for you to quest. Instead of just doing dungeons or world content or quests, you could just go to Torghast, get some Soul Ash, and you also get Renown while you're doing this as well anyway. So a great catch up opportunity for us to gain some levels, but also catching up on Renown, catching up on a little bit of Soul Ash so we can craft our Lego pretty early on. Besides that, that's going to be all the updates we have on PTR. Hopefully, we'll hear an announcement for when 915 will be available, hopefully sometime soon. But thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about all these updates? And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.